Uh, I like that all of you dressed up in tuxedos and ball gowns. Um, it just reminds me how many of you read my emails. So we are Canagather. Uh, we're New York's largest cannabis industry community. We host monthly education uh, and networking events. Um, and by we, I mean you guys, because you guys are the community. Uh, so round of applause for all of you. Thank you so much for coming. This is the approximate breakdown of who uh, is here. Um, mostly entrepreneurs, uh, some investors, service providers, uh, media, thank you so much for coming. Um, some activists, uh, as we are all here today for. Um, small note, um, this is not based on actual data. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is more of a guess. <laughs> We actually do have the data, um, and I'll, I'll look into it this weekend, but I feel like this is just sort of a nice approximation. So, a uh, quick show of hands. Raise your hand if you've been here before. Sh raise your hand if you've been here before. Uh, raise your hand if this is your first time. Good amount, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is our fourth consecutive event with over 200 people. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, round of applause once more. Uh, breaking records over here. So these are our sponsors. Um, second to you guys, they help make this happen. So you guys obviously first, but sponsors are critical as well. Um, so soak it all in. Thank you to all these people for making it happen. So a uh, special shout out, 3 Wincorp again, Eric Newman, uh, Vortex Power Fans for all your ventilation needs and Casa Verde Capital, um, which is Snoop's Venture Capital Fund. So if you need money, uh, let me know, I'll send it your way. But we also have another investor who we'll talk in a bit. But first off, uh, ProGrowTech. Um, ProGrowTech is an advanced LED lighting company. Um, I'm about to celebrate my 10-year anniversary in the industry here in a few months. Thank you very much. We didn't used to have crowds like this, so well-dressed at least when we first got started in this industry. Um, but the point, the reason I say that is, is that we come from the industry, um, so we know what uh, consumers need when it comes to energy efficient lighting solutions. And what a lot of people ask is, uh, does it grow plants? And that's why I'm showing a video, is it, it they actually do grow plants. Um, LED technology has come to a point now where you can get uh, the same yield and same quality, or better yield and quality, uh, as you can get with high pressure sodium, but saving 50% on your energy bill. Um, we are industry people, we're cultivators as well as lighting experts, uh, we provide a, a large amount of kind of free consulting along with the process, um, if you're interested in technique on how to grow under LED and succeed, um, and how to maximize your square footage. Uh, LED allows you to go vertical, um, our fixtures are fully waterproof, um, they're industrial, they're rugged, uh, they have a very low uh, heat signature because they're very large, they're four foot by four foot fixtures that we move very close to the canopy. Uh, they have excellent uh, heat dissipation characteristics, um, and folks are getting excellent results um, with the product. Uh, I will keep it brief because I know that this is a long event, um, but I'm here. Please come find me if you have any questions. We're really happy to be here in New York. Um, again, I'm Andrew Myers of ProGrowTech, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Ben Cassidy, Portland, Oregon. Uh, I've been uh, doing medical cannabis stuff for about seven years on the West Coast. Oh, sorry. Been doing uh, medical cannabis stuff on the West Coast, and by medical cannabis stuff, I mean uh, physician's office administration, um, extraction, and, and then most recently terpene extraction. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty complex topic, but there's also a lot of simple ways to talk about it. And so, um, you know, we, we've got uh, some experiential type things that we do, like the, uh, the, the infused beverages out front. We uh, primarily work as a B2B company that uh, supplies isolated terpene formulations, kind of custom uh, to the need of whatever brand we're working with. So that what that means is I help make additives for vape pens that make them have a certain effect, flavor, and aroma. Um, same thing that, you know, that's kind of transferable, it moves over into customized products that are topicals or edibles. Um, but really, you know, uh, one of the strongest tenets of what I try to, to speak to people on coming from the medical space and now kind of finding myself in, in this in international business space is that uh, cannabis use by definition is aromatherapy. Aromatherapy can be defined as the use of aromatic plant oils for therapy. And that's exactly what 
we're all doing when we, we engage in that practice and when we do business, we're, we're in the business of aromatherapy. There's volatile and non-volatile compounds. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the volatiles are the things that we find sexy. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the aroma, it's the flavor, it's the invigorating first kind of uh, ex effect and experience when you get it. And then you have the non-volatiles that take a little bit of time to metabolize and to, to, um, to take effect, and, but also last, last a lot longer because they're not fleeting. So, um, you know, if I, I, we've got the table out there. I'll be around all night. So if anybody wants to have any specific in-depth conversations about what you're doing, that's, you know, we have a, I'd say number one reason to contact and work with True Terpenes is our customer service department and really our, our sales department because of how much we invest into free consultation of, of helping people build their brands because, you know, this market is developing. It's not defined. It's not THC. You don't just inhale it. Uh, you have to, you have to really know what you're doing and you have to work with somebody that knows what they're doing. So. Um, as a company, like I said, we come from the medical space. Uh, our products are about making consistent, repeatable outcomes. So it's not that we're saying that we're recreating cannabis or that we're doing something better than cannabis. It's that we've learned from cannabis, we've identified the chemistry, and we're recombining it into formulas and, and ratios that really allow for consistent patient outcomes. If, if you have a digestive issue, not that we prescribe, if you have a digestive issue and you use the product, you find relief, I'll consistently sell it to you for the next 20 years and you won't have to look, worry about where your next medicine is going to come from. So uh, like I said, we'll be around. We've got a bunch of samples out on the table and free stuff. I don't want to leave with any of it, so please come take it. Um, and I uh, look forward to doing business with many of the people in this room and, and just, you know, conversing and whatnot. So happy to be in New York. Thanks for having me. I, I think what's pretty cool uh, about ProGrowTech and, and True Terpenes is that they actually flew out from the West Coast uh, to come here. So. Round of applause for all those on the West Coast who hate on the New York market. You guys are proof that it is very worthwhile. Hamptons Medi Spa in the house. Liz, not in the house. Okay. Okay. I think that for those of you who have been here before, you know what I'm going to ask. But for those of you who have not, who thinks they qualify for a New York MMJ card? All right, okay, a little bit improved since last time. All right, news flash, you all probably do qualify. So go to hamptonsmoneyspa.com, set up an appointment with Liz, ask her a bunch of questions, whatever, and she will answer them for you. Then you can go to Shop MedMen and uh, hook yourself up. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. Next up, your CBD oils. Hey, Kim. Hey, Josh. Hi. So, as you guys know, I can't get up here and speak unless I have half a bottle of Craig's Peppermint CBD Oil. Some people call me addicted to CBD oil, and I agree. So, um, but it's quite refreshing. So, Craig, what's your favorite product from your collection? It has to be the Peppermint Tincture. Tell us about it. It comes from Colorado Cultivars, which is 100% organic, USDA certified, kosher certified, organic hemp farmers. What is the biggest misconception about CBD? People think CBDs will get you high, but it doesn't. It just gives you a sense of wellness and helps you relax. And it's also an alternative to too much THC. So if you have one token over the line, please have some CBDs. Where can people find your products besides here? You can come every can of gather and find Craig here. He has a table set up, and he'll let you even try it. And I highly suggest the peppermint one if I didn't say that before. You can go to yourcbdoils.com and get all the CBDs you want and all the information you need. CBDoils.com of Long Your Island. Your CBD oils. Your CBD oils dot com or CBDoils of Long Island dot com. Y'all got that? Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Craig has been uh, one of our longest uh, term supporters uh, of Canagather, and apparently we uh, also get the same haircuts. So, uh, Kaufman and Associates. Neil? There he is. Thanks, Josh. Is that audible? OK. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thanks, Josh, for having us. Uh, my name is Neil Kaufman. I'm the managing partner of Kaufman and Associates. 
Corporate and Securities Council to the state legal cannabis industry. What does that mean? We are corporate cannabis lawyers. We've combined decades of securities and corporate law experience with years now, several years, of real hands-on cannabis industry experience from coast to coast, from New York and New Jersey to California. We've participated in well over, I think I'm losing track, about $150 million of cannabis industry financing transactions alone. That doesn't even count the acquisitions or all the other deals. We're here to help everyone in this room build their businesses, avoid the pitfalls, and build great success and wealth while making the benefits of this plan available to the entire country. Thanks. Uh, the ArcView Group is also one of our sponsors, uh, but you will hear from them later, maybe. BDS Analytics, uh, basically the leading uh, analytics provider. Uh, you probably saw Roy if you came to our December event. Uh, be sure to check them out, bdsanalytics.com. All the POS data you'll ever need. Dwayne Morris, come on up. Dave. Another lawyer is up here. Let's get out of the way. What's, what do you call 500 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A good start. Why didn't the shark eat the lawyer? Professional courtesy. That's right. So I wore a suit for you, Josh. Thank you. But no, I didn't go for the tie. No I sort tie. of expected zero other people to wear a tie. Whoever declared we should wear knots around our neck should be strung up with one. But So Dwayne Morris is about helping people get the medicine they need. We are about helping achieve social justice in our space. We are about helping people do to their own bodies what they want without being bothered. And our firm, I've been in this industry about five years, which is like 40 cannabis years, right? And I have the luck of having dropped into a firm three years ago that made the decision then to enter the space. We are the only top 100 law firm that is out of the closet doing this work. We are doing monthly webinars. We have got a very active blog. We are representing growers, sellers, licensees, uh, websites, funds being set up. We're doing tons of complex financings. And we cover most of the states, as well as every practice area you can imagine, from real estate and zoning to intellectual property and tax, to corporate and finance, environmental, dot, dot, dot. We can go on and on. And we're a proud supporter of Canada Gather, and thank you very much for having me. And happy birthday as well. Tang Fung, where is he at? There he is. Okay, everybody. My name is Daniel Fung, and two years ago I started a vape pen business. I started with Concentrate Vape Pens, and I've won a few awards from High Times in that time. And just a couple of months ago, I just launched a flower vaporizer. And the reason why I'm talking to you guys in New York is, I don't know if everybody's aware, but earlier this year, Etain was allowed to grind up marijuana flowers and sell it retail in New York State for vaporization. So I'm here to talk about my device and to talk about the fact that the vapor that comes from my device, what's different than most devices, is that the vapor actually tastes like marijuana when you actually inhale it. And I'm trying to do a price point that's good for the masses at $100. It includes a case, it's a smell-proof case, and optionally there's a power bank battery that goes inside that you could charge your device inside the case too. So most of my competition, they start at $250 and above, and you'll just get the device only. You won't get a perfect kit that I'll, you can carry. The marijuana will smell inside here, but it won't smell outside. So it'll be discreet, and you won't have a device charging on your computer or out of your car adapter where your kids might see it. It's like everything can be contained inside this. So. We're selling them in the back. I also have a 20% discount code for all Canna Gather. 420 is a discount, checkout discount code. It's good for the next month on my online store, fun.com. So come check out our booth in the back. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ben. Thank you. So thank you again to all of our sponsors. Super awesome. 
obviously, uh, this is not a Josh show, uh, although uh, sometimes it is, but most of the time people are like, this needs to stop. So, I got jokes, I got jokes. So, uh, just going down the list, Gary, my co-founder, Ronnie right there on Outreach, Thomas Jr., probably met him uh, walking in, Jackie, you heard from her, Kim right there, you'll hear from her soon, Tiana uh, running everything downstairs, Mason as well, Linda probably down there too, David, I see you, Thomas at the bar, uh, sponsored by True Terpenes, thank you so much for that, uh, Don Creador Esquire, uh, the man himself. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay's around taking some photos, being awesome in general. Uh, Andrew Ward, helping out with uh, what you'll hear from in a sec. And Zach Cederbaum, who apparently has an incredibly loud and effective voice. And without further ado, Cannabis with Kim B. Hey guys, what's up? The holiday season is coming. I'm super excited. I hope you guys have 420 plans. If you're a real stoner, you do. So if you're sitting home, it's not okay. So tomorrow night, there's another meetup in Jersey City. If you're interested in what's happening in New Jersey, as you should be, if you're kind of curious or you're already in the industry, you need to know what's going on. Ronnie, tomorrow night, what time does it start? Six o'clock tomorrow night in Jersey City. What are we talking about? Cannabis in New Jersey. Come out. We have a bunch of great speakers coming out to represent. We teamed up with Jersey City Tech Meetup, so it's going to be a phenomenal event. And it's free. Free. Free event. So check it out. So Cinco de Mayo. You all know I like to drink tequila. Not anymore. I don't drink. Um, it's not a good look for me. Um, it is also the Cannabis Parade. Get your asses out there in March. We, where's Joe Bondi? Joe? Did you tell me that your 12th grade child is getting their high school kids to march? Senior class is coming. Get your asses out there. We need you. This is not about making money or business. It's about what we believe in. So I need you guys all at the Cannabis Parade. Cool? All right. Cannabisparade.org. So tonight we have the 420 inaugural awards. I can't vote or win because I'm Kim B. Um, but Joy Be Beckerman is, oh, she is my everything. Like, when I grow up, I want to be like Joy. So I always pick her. She's my idol of, like, cannabis. So Joy, can we give a round of applause to my, I, I'm a fangirl, Joy. Sorry, I just love her, and I had to say it. Um, okay. So it's time for the news. Good evening, everyone. Gather around. Welcome to the wild world of weed. I'm your plug for news and events. This is Cannabis with Kim B. Ooh, there's some good stuff happening. Trending news. Two major pieces of news from the FDA. Today, the FDA said that British-made cannabis drugs significantly does indeed reduce seizures in children with severe forms of epilepsy and warrants the U.S. approval. Hell yeah. Woo! Second, you have until April 23rd to tell the FDA what you think about scheduling about the five THC substances. Visit regulations.gov and search international drug scheduling by April 23rd. Hashtag community cannabis strong as fuck. I really wanted to read this piece about Lamar Odom, but I'm going to put it up on Instagram Live later because there's so much other good news to talk about. So on April 13th, President Trump promised Colorado Governor Cory Gardner that he will support Congress's effort to protect state legalized cannabis laws in marketplaces. This is great news because, as we all know, Donald Trump has never went back on his word before. <laughs> Hashtag... What's Putin stand on weed? So on here, um, Andrew, who does the writing, Andrew, stand up. No, stand up. Stand up, homie. Yeah. Kim Note. Boner, pronounced Boner. John Boner. To me, he's a boner. I can't help it. Anyway, so that's the realness of the news here. 
Speaking of white Republican men liking cannabis all of a sudden, John Boehner joined Cannabis Executive Board and Mitch McConnell now supports a hemp bill. No word on it on this if it means support erasing misdemeanor criminal uh, defense charges, but we know the answer to that. Douchebag OD, OG, douchebag OG. Ooh, Cynthia Nixon. Cynthia Nixon asked supporters to donate how much? 420. 400, $4.20. $4 Four dollars and twenty cents. I, I think we should all reach in our pockets and take out the four dollars and twenty cents after a pledge to legalize marijuana. New York Democrat and gubernatorial candidate Cynthia Nis Nixon asked supporters to donate four dollars and twenty cents to mark her platform to legalize cannabis. The move Nixon has experts calling it such a Miranda thing to do. Hashtag Canna in the city. I still really want to meet, read this Lamar Odom thing, but I'm not going to. Cuomo lays the groundwork for legalizing marijuana. Speaking of New York's governor race, Governor Cuomo recently laid groundwork for legalizing cannabis in New York State. Little is known about the plan, but one point is already clear. None of that money is going to the FTA. Hashtag, where the F is my train? Anyway, there's a lot of amazing people here that are being honored tonight. And there's so many people that I look up to. And I'm really excited to celebrate the high holidays with you guys. So happy 420, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely the most uh, exciting thing for me over the past month has been the bipartisan support uh, for the cannabis industry. I mean. I think we're, we're all pretty pumped about that, uh, come a long way. Um, maybe no one more than, than Ethan, who will honor tonight. I agree. Mental clapping, mental clapping. Well, save your rounds of applause for, for the, good, the good stuff, because the Canna Gather 420 Awards are here. Uh, Going to feature entrepreneurs, operators, investors, and champions. And obviously, as mentioned, the Lifetime Achievement Award to none other than Ethan Nadelman. So, round of applause for you guys being here at the first one. So, the entrepreneurs. Kim kind of ruined it, but here we go. Joy Beckerman, thank you so much for everything that you do. Josh, it's really an honor to be a part of Canna Gather. I love watching what you're doing. I love watching this industry grow. It's amazing. And I sit on uh, Normal's National Board of Directors, Hemp Industries Association being our nation's brain trust, founded in 1994. Normal, of course, the national organization for the reform of marijuana, marijuana laws, founded in 1970. My company, Hemp Based International, is an industrial hemp-focused legal support expert witness and consulting and brokerage firm. Um, it is important for me to tell you folks that New York really is the Empire State. It's part of why I moved back here. You're the only state, we're the only state, that has put $10 million into state grant funds for the Industrial Hemp Research Initiative. So $5 million for cultivation, $5 million for processing, and they still are giving this money away, folks. And I want you to know that even though the cultivation uh, application process ended in November 22nd, 2017, they have reopened it specific to oil, seed, and fiber because the 44 licenses that have been issued, about 50% of them are for CBD, and we love CBD, but that's the billion-dollar industry. And those of you who are interested in the trillion-dollar industry, please come see me because guess what that is? industrial hemp. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Josh. Honey. So the point of the awards, as you can tell, is to recognize how many amazing people we have in the industry in New York City alone, or the New York City area, New Jersey, Connecticut, etc. So each one of the people that we recognize could probably be a keynote speaker in their own right. Uh, Joy, for example, will be uh, in September. Um, but just to give you some perspective and context in terms of who we're awarding, um, I mean, you can just sort of look at Joy's 
three sentence bio. Um, she's been working with Mitch McConnell on the bill. Um, for hemp, she is the person to talk to. Um, so yeah, we're, we got some legit folks in this audience. Um, and that's ju just the folks that we're honoring. Even beyond the folks that we're honoring, we have some amazing people. Tahira. Uh, Tahira is the round of applause for Tahira. <laughs> Tahira is here, uh, but doesn't want to come up, so I'll talk for her. Uh, Tahira has been a general manager of a very large brand. You may have heard of it, uh, Marley Naturals. And now she's the managing director of Hyper Ventures uh, and the CFO of MTech Acquisition Corp. Uh, which is a, a $50 million uh, publicly traded uh, acquisition company that is looking for a company to acquire with said $50 million. So if you have a company that is awesome, talk to Tahira, if, whether it's uh, in the tens of millions of dollars in valuation or uh, just getting started. Uh, so round of applause for Tahira. Um, find her in the audience. <laughs> LeafLink. Uh, many of you may have heard uh, that LeafLink was one of the pioneers uh, in the uh, cannabis industry software space. They scored an investment and a subsequent investment from Lair Hippo Ventures, which is one of the leading uh, venture capital firms in New York, uh, who is now making the plunge into the cannabis industry, largely thanks to them. A uh, SaaS platform that is absolutely crushing it uh, on the West Coast, but they are based in New York. Uh, Zach Silverman and Ryan Smith. Uh, couldn't make it tonight, uh, but if you're interested in what LeafLink is up to, I strongly recommend that you check it out. Round of applause for LeafLink. Everyone knows women grow, um, but I'll let them come up and talk. Hey, everybody. You guys look so amazing. Man, congratulations. This is dope as heck. Um, I'm Gia Marone. I'm the executive VP for Women Grow. And um, the whole reason, one of the reasons why I joined this industry was to be in a room like, look like this. When I first came into the space back in, I'll say I started studying it in 2013, and even looking at Women Grow, it didn't look like this. What do we do to make a difference, right? I know what Women Grow, what attracted me is they said that they're um, cultivating cannabis leaders, right? That's great. But part of that is we also have to do our service in making a difference so that we're not replicating what other industries have done. And in this room is the whole reason why I joined the space, because I wanted to see reflections of ourselves in the space that we work in. So thank you for all that you do. I, um, I'm really proud of what Women Grow is growing into. We're going into our fourth year, um, you know, really working on becoming a better business, supporting each other better, creating more education programs, which we actually have one coming up next, um, next month in May, uh, focusing on applications opening. I'm doing a plug, sorry, shameless plug. Um, That's the point. <laughs> doing, uh, focusing on the application uh, platform for Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, I forgot one other. But we've got to get back to education, right? And we want to invite more people at every level of their career into the space. And so for me, my responsibility was not only bringing my personal Edu um, experience, but to join amazing women in this space that we all do it together. So thank you very much. I hope you come to a Women Grow meeting. I hope to meet some of you here and let's build and do business together. Thank you. Pamela Johnson, a uh, round of applause for her. Uh, Pamela couldn't be here tonight, um, but uh, Pamela's awesome. For any of you who have been in the industry for a bit, uh, Pamela does everything. Uh, she was originally in PR, uh, but she gets down to the product level and uh, helping on investment side. She was former SVP of Electrum, 
uh, now uh, running her own consultancy, Cloud12. Uh, Pamela is amazing. Uh, she's always advocated for the patients uh, and brings uh, an amazing heart to this industry. Uh, so round of applause for Pamela. Thank you to all of our entrepreneurs. Congratulations. So we're going to do this one a little quickly. We might give out a couple, ruin the surprise a little bit, but one of them has to go. Very important call. Definitely worthwhile. So Ianthus, Kronos, Etain, and Kevin Murphy, and Jen Hanser are our Can Together Operator Award winners. Round of applause for all of them. Mr. Kevin Murphy, uh, very glad that you could make it on short notice. Uh, I'm interested, as everyone else is, what is acreage holding? First and foremost, it's a pleasure to be here. And Acreage Holdings is a holding company um, operating in 11 states, um, growing, processing, and dispensing cannabis. We started the journey in 2011 to some degree in stealth mode um, for good reason. We really did not want to change banks on a regular basis. So we had essentially operated in various states under various names um, back in 2011. Very few believed that cannabis should be available for uh, recreational or medical use. Since that time, we've seen a sea change where obviously 60 plus percent believe it should be available for uh, recreational or adult use and more than 90 percent of this country believes it should be available for uh, medical use. So we have, in turn, answered those statistics with essentially hiring a group to reskin our entire organization to make it one brand, one unified uh, offering. And so today we're actually known as Acreage Holdings. We've actually gone through a, a bit of a name change um, in the very, very, you know, about six or seven months ago. With that, you know, it's always been our goal since we started in 2011 to essentially advocate for helping people help themselves and really to emphasize that point it was our goal to not only surround our organization with the best folks that we could find in the business and in business in general but also bring you know what some might view as controversial folks to the space to essentially try to alter or change the conversation. And you know whether you agree or disagree with uh, Speaker uh, Boehner uh, in, in some of his political views, um, or you uh, are a little bit cynical that many years ago he didn't uh, agree that um, cannabis should be in fact legal, today he's changed his mind. And I'll tell you, one thing that I love about introducing Speaker Boehner to the conversation is, as the Speaker of the House, he could have joined any board that he wanted to join, number one. And two, he essentially decided to join the board of a cannabis company. And so I think that when someone shows courage that they have the opportunity to change their thoughts and thinking to basically advocate for what we believe to be a great solve, um, we're certainly proud of that and certainly proud of the fact that we're bringing him to the conversation. So in the end of the day, whether we're white or black, whether we're a liberal or a conservative, the fact is, this is medicine that's going to help people and we're here to help people help themselves. And I'll tell you this, when we had spoken to the speaker months and months ago about it, you know, he was a little bit on the fence. But when you essentially go through the statistical numbers of 115 people every day dying from an overdose of opiates, and essentially this medicine can be a solve for them, he was essentially in with both feet. And we're going to advocate for um, basically substituting cannabis for opiate use 
it's going to be a very, very big passion of ours. You know, the United States of America are great consumers of everything. In fact, the United States equates to 5% of the world's population. But in fact, they consume a staggering 80% of all opiates produced on this globe. So let me tell you something. Whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, whether, again, you are older or younger, you still can change your mind, buy into the opportunity to be a part of this movement. John Boehner has done it with enthusiasm. In turn, Governor Bill Weld has done it with enthusiasm, although Governor Weld has done it since 1992. We're proud to have both of them a part of the organization, and together we hope to help all of us help ourselves. And I'll close with uh, the simple thought that we are greedy as a group to essentially move this conversation forward. And I will promise you this, we'll add more influencers to this board, and we will be in Washington advocating for what we believe is the right move. And so in turn, I think things are going to change and change quite quickly. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I'm glad to be a part of the uh, organization here tonight. So thanks very, very much for having me. And with that, I'll say good night. So basically, for an entire day, and maybe the second, the only thing that I heard was acreage. Acreage, acreage, acreage. Good job. Uh, nailing every single press outlet, a bunch of Facebook friends coming out of the woodwork, being like, have you heard of acreage? Um, so that was a power move right there. Uh, props to them. Uh, Ianthus and Sativa, you heard from Hadley Ford um, recently at a Canada Gather event. $100 million market cap company, recently acquired New York-based Sativa. We'll soon have a Brooklyn dispensary. Uh, they are awesome, uh, doing very well. Kronos Group, disclaimer, I own shares. Um, not enough. Uh, Kronos Group is, is the uh, first NASDAQ-listed uh, cannabis company. Uh, pretty amazing. Check them out. Um, I can't even keep track of what their market cap is. Hundreds of millions, maybe close to a billion at this point. Uh, Michael Gorenstein, I was friends with. He was like, yeah, I'm sort of interested in the cannabis shirt space. And I was like, oh, yeah, I run the, this, this get-together. We host monthly events. And I see him two years later. Uh, and I'm like, hey, man, like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, like, I'm in the cannabis industry now. I'm like, cool, like, me too. I'm still doing the same thing. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, I moved to this random space and in Canada and I acquired a hundred million dollar company and I was like okay he was like you should buy my my stock and I was like well uh, you know I think that would be a conflict of interest because I'd like you to speak at my event and so I didn't buy for a while um, and I should have and then I eventually did so now I have a little disclaimer that says uh, I own shares this is definitely not uh, me suggesting that you go out and buy uh, but definitely me suggesting that what they've done is something that's absolutely incredible uh, and helping drive uh, the cannabis industry forward and making it mainstream. Etain Health. Speaking of which, where is Amy? Amy? There she is. Thank you, Josh. Um, everybody, obviously, we've been here since the beginning of New York's program, and we appreciate all of you as customers, clients, critics, and supporters of the next move, which I know is legalization. So in honor of 420, the only thing new for us is we will be um, releasing water-soluble powder that can be mixed in your coffee and your tea and for your parents who might not want the flavor of cannabis, it will go smoothly with their smoothies. <laughs> so I want you all to enjoy your weekend, and thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. Uh, Etain, as, as far as I'm aware, was the only uh, New York State only uh, RO license holder um, of the first five. The only women-owned in New York. 
So a lot of firsts, Etain Health, thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, you heard from Kevin. Uh, Jen is with Privateer. Uh, in particular, uh, she's the VP of Business Development for Tilray. Uh, she travels all over the world, so unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Uh, check out Tilray, check, check out Jen. She's been doing amazing things in the industry as part of Privateer. In particular, her work with Tilray. The investors. Let me just see how we're doing on time. The investors. The Arcview Group. In particular, Bobby Paley and Gene Sullivan. I think many of you Where's know. Gene? I think many of you know about Arcview, but I came into this business four years ago when I was sharing oysters with my son, and he said, "Mom, you have to come into cannabis. It's going to be legal." in California. Then I met Gene, and Gene said, you have to join Arcview. So I did. I want to say that I've built every one of my investments, which is Steep Hill Worldwide, um, Rosentia, uh, two, two um, products that we're bringing out in California. It's all because of the circle that Arcview provides. If you, don't go to, if you haven't been to any of their meetings, I suggest you go to every one. If you're interested in this space, I suggest you get active with Arcview. It, will, it, it provides you with friends for life, business for life, and an opportunity to make a huge difference in this world. And that's why we're here, to make a difference. So <clears throat> thank you very much, Josh, for this uh, and honoring all these wonderful people. I am here uh, for, for a real key reason, and that's because my hero, Ethan Nadelman, is speaking. And you will understand why in a moment. Did you know that since just the beginning of the year, almost $3 billion has been invested in this industry? That's U.S. alone, U.S. and North America, private and publics. That means that the money is really starting to torque. So do you have the same disease I have, which is the disease of FOMO? And here's how I have cured myself it's just what Bobby said, Arcview cures this disease. If you're a serious investor, we want you. If you are a high growth entrepreneur, especially the women, our door is open. Our door is open to you as an investor or as an entrepreneur. So uh, because Troy Dayton, the really fabulous CEO of, of uh, Arcview was here, said, wow, Jean, we need to be a sponsor. So this is both my thank you and my, and my sponsor piece. I welcome you after uh, we're through and Ethan's through, I'll set up a little lemonade stand. I have a little flyer on Arcview. <laughs> and so come and talk to us. My partner, Brian Chang is here. My fellow Arcview colleagues are here, many tonight. We welcome you. Thank you for this. Thank you. Again, I'm very particular about my disclaimers. I'm not going to make a comment that everyone in the room is thinking about disclaimers. Every, no? No one else is thinking what I'm thinking about disclaimers? Not going to say it. I'll tell you at the after party as always. So, um, again, uh, we were actually going to give this award out, but fortunately, um, Arc came through with the sponsorship, so that's a disclaimer. Uh, Mark Zittman from Tuatara Capital. Um, Tuatara is one of the leading uh, investing platforms. They invest in a diversified portfolio of cannabis industry companies. Mark is a powerhouse investor with an incredible background. Um, I can't even give, um, do it justice. Um, it, it's just amazing. Uh, Guggenheim, super mainstream, um, power investing groups and uh, bringing his knowledge and experience to the cannabis industry and that whole team is incredible. Um, shout out to them. Chris, Chris, uh, I think he's somewhere in this room, but uh, I'm not going to call him out because he just spoke uh, two months ago. Uh, Chris, as you all know, uh, was the former CMO of Anheuser-Busch uh, InBev uh, and has now brought his talents to the cannabis industry as well. Uh, so hard to imagine a more high-profile, incredible switch uh, from the mainstream and particularly the alcohol industry to the cannabis industry. I see you now. Not going to give you up, give you up though. But hopefully you'll join us at the after party. 
will join us at the after party. Cool. So thank you so much, Chris, for all that you do. Carol Detweiler, uh, sort of same story uh, as as Mark Zipman and Tuatara, another um, just truly incredible resume and pedigree, who is like, you know what's important? The cannabis industry is important. Uh, exploring deals all over the world. Uh, really interesting macro outlook. If you're interested in uh, international uh, cannabis industry companies, uh, in addition to domestic, Kyle's a great person to reach out to. Vivian Azer. Uh, if you don't know Vivian, Vivian is one of the leading analysts, if not the leading analyst uh, in the industry over at Cowan and Company. Um, she is an incredible connector, hosts uh, events with, that, the first time that I saw it, I sort of thought that it was the TED uh, of the cannabis industry, just every single uh, name that you could imagine. Uh, Vivian has the sharpest insight and is an incredible connector. Um, so those are uh, the Canna Gather Award winners for the investor group. Many of you are here tonight for the champions. Even if you don't know it yet, you're here tonight because of the champions. The champions are the ones who have laid the, found work, laid the groundwork and the foundation, or found work, as I just coined, My accidental jokes are funnier. So laid the groundwork and the foundation for the industry, and many of these folks are continuing to do so. Without them, we wouldn't be here at all. And many of you are here specifically for that. In particular, Gene, here for Ethan. Uh, so thank you all that, for all that you do to these folks. Howard Zucker runs a health commission uh, at the New York State government level. Diane Savino. State Senator, Dick Gottfried, State Assemblyman, 75th District, Liz Kruger, State Senator, 28th District. Thank you so much for all of that. <laughs> Dick was kind enough to uh, leave us a little uh, video note, um, but uh, unfortunately we're, we're running a little low on time. So in exchange, be sure to check out Dick Gottfried online because uh, he went out of his way to, to make this video, uh, and he's been doing this for 40 years. So literally without him uh, and the other folks that were mentioned, we would not be here in terms of New York. Kelly Crossan. <laughs> Kelly, do you want to come up? Marijuana policy. Thank you, Josh. I really, I'm kind of overwhelmed by this. I had no idea that there would be this many people here. This is very last minute. Um, it actually so was last you. minute. We only told them like yesterday. Yeah, I had no idea. So like I everyone. Want to thank you all. Um, and I, I'm curious first to know how many people in this room have heard of the Marijuana Policy Project before? Yay, hello. Well, I, you know, I'm glad to see a lot of you do know uh, about the Marijuana Policy Project. And for those of you who don't, um, we are the largest organization in the U.S. Uh, devoted solely to changing marijuana laws. We want to see the end of marijuana prohibition in our time. Uh, we're, we're well on our way. Um, we've been driving the train since uh, 1995, so it's a, it's a long effort. We, we are playing the long game. And in that time, we've taken the lead on 16 of the 29 medical marijuana laws um, that exist currently, and six of the nine legal states, even though that's eight, kind of nine, because Maine is, you know, supposedly legal according to their citizens, but their gov governor has decided otherwise. And these are the dirty little tricks that politicians play uh, all across the country that you're reading about, you know, at increasing speed and pace. And it's so exciting. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this since 2009. My primary role is as fundraiser. I do, you know, speak. Uh, in front of a lot of different groups, I was just asked to speak in front of the New Jersey School Boards Association on the impact of legalization um, in the opioid crisis. So this is a very timely issue in state government. The, the School Board Association wants to talk to us about that. I mean, that's really encouraging. Um, I, I can't say enough. It's really about so many people at MPP. We currently have about 33, 34 staff members spread out all over the country. Uh, taking as an active uh, role as we can, both on the lobbying front. We have two 
uh, in the state legislature lobbying front, is, and that's most of the East Coast. Um, we have two ballot initiative campaigns this year. Um, first for medical marijuana in the state of Utah, which will be a very interesting battle given the Mormon population. I mean, they think tea is a stimulant, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, you know, all indications are good. And then for legalization uh, in Michigan, so those are our two ballot initiative campaigns. Other than that, we're lobbying in many states, um, though in New York State, we are running an education campaign in support of the medical marijuana program through our C3. Um, and you are all welcome to donate to that effort, to the C3 or C4 lobbying. Um, we're also working hard in Congress. We have a PAC um, that I think will be more active this year than any other. Um, you can talk to me about that. Uh, you can reach me npp.org. You know, I'm easily findable there. Josh knows me. I live here in the city. I'm around. Get in touch. Thank you. Mr. Leo Bridgewater. What's happening, everybody? All right, so look, check it out. I got to go fast. Thank you, baby. So this is what we're going to do first. Everybody pull out your phones and put it on video. We're about to have us a moment. So while you're doing that, for all the new people here, uh, you guys are coming in on a conversation that we've been having. Uh, this is my tribe. So most of, uh, most of the regulars here have known me since I started with my advocacy in New Jersey. Uh, we were able to get PTSD added to the state's medical marijuana program. And as you know, we're also moving towards adult legalization in New Jersey. So just so, and to my tribe, you know, hey sissy, uh, to my tribe, you know, um, Leo Bridgewater uh, isn't the one that's doing this. I need you all to start taking uh, ownership of this. I want you all to start saying we did this. I was just telling Chica not too long ago that I want you to take credit because I'm representing you. I'm representing us. So we did this. We are doing this. And we are having an event tomorrow in Jersey City because it's go time. It's now, now it's time. A lot of y'all have been asking me what's next, how are we going to do it, where are we going to get there, all that stuff tomorrow. I'm pleased to announce that we were able to get uh, some changes made to the current bill, 13A1348. And one of them's changes is we're going from 15% minority set aside to 25%. <laughs> Lots more needs to happen, but we're making, we're making strides. You know, uh, the assembly, uh, I'm sorry, the bill writer, uh, Assemblyman Reed Gussiara, is actively campaigning, trying to get as much uh, uh, support behind this bill as he can get. And so that means he needs our support. So look him up, Reed Gussiara, Gussiara G U S C I O R A, first name Reed, R E E D, and donate as best you can. Um, we have an event going on on uh, April 24th in Atlantic City. It's in response to the New Jersey Legislative Black Caucus's hearings. Uh, yeah, they, they, hey y'all, they still say gateway drug. That's, that's what we're dealing with right now. They still say gateway drug and they say that with a straight face standing in the midst of an opioid abuse and addiction epidemic. Yeah, you, taxpaying United States citizen, have, are now at 22 veteran suicides a day. Half that number is the Vietnam veterans. They're still doing themselves. As of right now, we have 130,000 Vietnam veterans who have come home and committed suicide. That's more than who died in the war, and that's 58,000. Oh, yeah, and by the way, we passed that number years ago. So everything that you hear me saying, everything that you see me doing, I think it's a much better rate of return on investment by paying your taxes than 22 veteran suicides a day. And to the state of New York, all of you, you're welcome. Because you know that because the state of New Jersey is getting ready to legislatively legalize cannabis, we just fast forwarded your, 
for however long it's going to take for it to come here, but it's going down because ain't no way in hell y'all going to let us make all that money for that long. Tomorrow and April 24th, y'all, I love you, and we are doing this. Marvin Washington et al. against Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III. Marvin and Mr. Hiller. Hey, guys. Hey, Mike. How are you doing? Marvin, I'm Mike. Some people confuse us sometimes because we, we look so much alike. Go ahead, Marvin. You start us off. No, I just want to uh, thank everybody for coming out here, man, and, and this being the first one, but, you know, doing forward thinking, I think in 20 years, it's going to be, you know, we're going to remember this event right here, and I'm just happy to be a part of it and be part of the team with Lauren. Come on up, Joe. Come on, guys. Zach, yeah, Fatima. Yeah. Come, come up. On. Because this is the team that educated me and convinced me to be a part of the lawsuit, and I think we're on the right side of, of history, and we have time on our side because we are being uh, still influenced by, by Henry Aslinger, who was born in 1892, and Richard Milhouse Nixon, who was born in 1913. You know, this is the team that's going to bring this cannabis movement industry into the 21st century because we're still being influenced by these people that uh, were born in the 19th and 20th century. So I'm just happy to be a part of this, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for, for Josh and the progress that he's made. And let's keep up the fight, man, because uh, we need it, and we're all in this together. So thank you guys for having me, and thanks for being part of this uh, industry and movement. I think one of the coolest things about being here is I, for a few minutes, I get to stand in the presence of some of the coolest people in New York State. So thank you all for having us. First of all, thanks for inviting us, Josh. Uh, we brought this lawsuit last year um, because we recognized something that, of course, most of America is now recognizing, and that is that the laws prohibiting the possession and, and treatment of, with cannabis are completely and totally irrational. They make absolutely no sense. On the one hand, the government says that cannabis has no medical applications whatsoever. On the other hand, the United States government has a patent because, on ha cannabis precisely because they, they believe it does have a medical application. On the other hand, they take the position that cannabis is so mind-bogglingly dangerous that you can't test it even under strict medical supervision. This is idiocy. And so when we started thinking about this, we thought to ourselves, how can we change this? And the best way is for, for us to use the law as an instrument of social change, which is really the way it should be used. And so I began to work with some of the most talented lawyers in the country, among, which, among whom are Lauren Rudick, who is amazing, talented, and creative. See, I couldn't even finish. One of the most creative and talented corporate cannabis attorneys in the United States today, an amazing, amazing lawyer. Also, I work with, excuse me, Joe Bondi, an amazing criminal defense lawyer and a lifelong advocate for legalization. Uh, I have associates, uh, Fatima Afia and Jason Zakai, who are not here, amazing lawyers. Uh, Zachary Tyson and Susan, and Susan Falls, she's not here, amazing paralegals. We have an amazing team here, and it is our objective to change the law because the fact of the matter is that no one should be sitting in jail today. No one should be worried about being prosecuted today because they're using a drug or are you, are you treating with a medication that makes them better. That's the reason we're doing this. And we, we thank all of you because even though we, we are doing the, the legal work, we stand on your shoulders. And when we stand in front of the United States Supreme Court with a copy of the winning decision in our hand, we'll be looking at all of you and saying, let's party at Marvin's house. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, one housekeeping note. If anybody has an Android phone and a C charger, let me know. I'm on like 5%. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely the first time someone said that. Um, 
It's actually the reason why I switched to an iPhone. I actually prefer the Android, but my battery would always die. And then none of my friends would have chargers. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, Marvin was uh, instrumental uh, as an advisor to me in Canada Gathers formation, so thank you so much. And then, uh, Mr. Hiller, thank you so much for leading the charge, you and your team uh, as well, uh, David, uh, Lauren, for, for leading the charge. I think irrespective of, of the decision, which I'm hopeful will, will come out the right way, uh, you've made the cannabis conversation incredibly mainstream uh, to pit uh, 11 year old, tw 12, uh, now 12 year old girl uh, against the United States Attorney General uh, in fighting for her medicine. I think it's a pretty compelling story. I think it's really uh, widened the, the conversation and, and been, a, as you can tell, uh, a way to really bring this New York City community together. So thank you both. Last but not least, you may have heard of Drug Policy Alliance. And Chris Alexander and Cassandra Frederic are your New York folks representing Drug Policy Alliance. All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much, Josh, for having us and for uh, honoring the work that we've been doing uh, in New York and across the country to end marijuana prohibition. I won't say too much because we have our founder coming up in just a second. I don't know where he went. Where's he at? So I'll let him uh, take the take the reins. But what I will say is that we've been uh, making an incredible amount of progress here in New York. Um, this, as you can see, if you watch the, the news, you know, things are changing. Um, that's in large part to the work that you all do. Um, and we just appreciate being a part of this community and this movement um, and centering the people who've been most impacted by prohibition. Um, so we'll continue to move forward. Hopefully, you know what I mean, things change. We'll catch up to Jersey, Leo. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll keep pushing, but uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, Ethan, you know, he'll take it away for DPA. Is it true that there's a lobby day coming up? There is a lobby day. If you're ready to come up with us to knock on the state senate's door and let them know that we're ready to make some change here in New York, uh, please join us. You can learn more um, at Start Smart. Uh, New York, which is our Twitter handle, Start Smart NY, or go to our website at smart-ny.com, or just ask Josh for more details because he has all the info. All right, but thank you so much. Or again. ask Chris. Or ask Josh. Um, <laughs> thank you so much again for the support, and uh, we'll continue to do the work, and hopefully we'll have a legalized New York um, in, in a few, in a few. I'm not going to say it soon. <laughs> soon. Thanks, Chris. It's nine o'clock, almost. So uh, this is sort of the first time that we've done it. Um, we might have a few further categories. I think there's a lot of folks who could be uh, recognized. Uh, media, uh, think about Now This Weed, uh, Vice, obviously, HBO for uh, the shows that they're putting on, uh, just to name a few. Service providers have a lot of great law firms uh, product companies like Paul and Gear, etc. Uh, next gen, who's really going to be the breakout uh, individual that we're going to see over the next couple of years mature uh, into one of these award winners? And so without further ado, I'd like to bring up Lifetime Achievement Award winner Ethan Nadelman. So we actually. So basically, when Ethan, when I saw an article that Ethan was retiring from DPA, I was like, he needs a party. This guy is the man. He needs to be honored. And with that, we actually do have a proper award. So thank you so much, a Ethan. Black. Shit. I mean. Josh, I was kind of hoping for like vaporizer pens and oils and lotion. Where's Dan? I mean, shit. Dan Fung, he's here somewhere. Um, and then in addition, uh, we have a small gold envelope uh, that has my business card in case you ever want to call me. It also has a check for $1,000 to DPA. Nice. On behalf Thanks. of Canada. Thank you. Thank you very much. But the business card, you should call me. Let's hang out. So if you don't know Ethan, this dude's legit. 
he doesn't have uh, a degree from Harvard. He has three. Three degrees. And then he went and convinced Princeton to let him be a professor, even though he's very much a fan of drug reform. And as you all know, Princeton is not exactly the most liberal place, although it's working on it. So Ethan is pretty legit. If you don't think that being a professor at Princeton and having three degrees from Harvard makes him, not to say that that's the only way of classifying someone, but in this case, you'll sort of, you'll sort of see. In case that wasn't good enough for you, Ethan spoke at TED on the war on drugs. Now, if you haven't heard of TED, I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> But I'll explain it to you anyway. Basically, the smartest people in the world and some of the best business people in the world and some of the leading advocates in the world go to a conference where they, then, where they then listen to other people speak about what's going on in their mind and what their life's work is. Ethan spoke at TED on the war on drugs. Ethan is the guy. Ethan is the guy, and 1.6 million views helps give you a sense of that. So Ethan, for everything that you've done over the history of your career and all that you will continue to do, because this is just chapter one, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank you. OK. So um, thank you very much, Josh, and all of you here at Canada Gather, and it's great to I just want to make one suggestion first, because it is the end of the long evening. I want to suggest that everybody who's been sitting just stand up for about 15 seconds and stretch for like, you know, stretch and get your joint, you know, and stop your tush from aching and, you know. I like okay. that. That's a good suggestion. We should have like an intermission. Very good. Like a seventh inning. Okay, sit down now. That's enough. Uh, don't smoke yet. Just no smoking. No smoking. No, no vaping smoking. at Canada Gather. No smoking, no vaping. I know you're kidding, but um, just a reminder. Yeah, but Josh, we'll send around a shopping bag into which all of you who have your vapes and your oils and your CBD, you all look, just go ahead and do that. That'll be a nice thing. So let me, let me just say, um, this is a weird experience for me because I've been involved in working to end the war on drugs, which includes ending marijuana prohibition for many decades, since before many of you were born. And it feels good. I mean, I stepped down from running Drug Policy Alliance. I started it, depending on how you count it, in 94, 2000. Stepped down last year. Kind of taking a little break to see what it is I want to do next. Uh, but this cause has obviously been dear to my heart. And I think, um, let me just say this. I, I, I just, I think it's important. I, I always been kind of historically minded. Just to understand and appreciate where what you all are the product of. How did this happen that you're all sitting in a can of gather room looking at how to make some money in the marijuana industry legally? Legally. I know some of you did it before this illegally, but you're all going to try to do it legally now. And so I, just to put this in some perspective, you know, uh, before Kelly mentioned, Marijuana Policy Project's been out there f focusing solely on marijuana reform and been a key ally of Drug Policy Alliance for a long period of time, right? For me coming into this thing, it was really a matter of looking at the entire war on drugs. The entire war on drugs. It was not just the criminalization of marijuana. It was not just half of all the drug arrests in the country each year were for marijuana. It was not just the, the tens of billions of dollars funding really bad people coming out of both the US and other foreign countries committing acts of violence. It was not just all the people being victimized by this stuff. It was not just the fact that there was this amazing medicine out there that the government insisted on treating as criminal. It was not just the people whose lives were destroyed, whose careers were destroyed, whose freedom was taken away because of marijuana. It was the broader drug war. It was the fact that this country with barely 4% of the world's population had over 20% of the world's incarcerated population, right? It was the war on crack cocaine and heroin that was sweeping up people like there was no tomorrow. It was building a nation in which our rates of incarceration are number one in the world. Five to ten, 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 ten times the rate of rates of incarceration in Europe and other civilized countries. 
He was building the number of people locked up on drug charges from 50,000 to half a million people, not just weed, but everything else together. And just because, it doesn't mean that I say we should be legalizing crack cocaine or legalizing heroin, but it is to say that treating those drugs as fundamentally a criminal matter, that treating anybody who uses or possesses those drugs as a criminal, even if they do no harm to anybody else, that that is just as wrong as the criminalization of marijuana as well. It doesn't mean the solution is the same. And it also means that you all stand at a unique intersection in the history of American politics and economics and culture. Never before in American history has a movement driven almost entirely by concerns for personal freedom, for social justice, for racial equity, for good public policy, resulted virtually as a byproduct in the emergence of a legal industry that is soon going to be worth tens of billions of dollars a year. Never before. If you look at all the other social justice movements, the ones which the movement for drug policy reform, we sort of you know, follow in the footsteps and stand on the shoulders of other movements for personal freedom and social justice, gay rights, civil rights, women's rights. Every one of those movements had significant economic ramifications as they succeeded, but not one of them developed a whole brand new industry. If you then look, for example, the one closest parallel, the repeal of alcohol prohibition. But the repeal of alcohol prohibition was essentially the re-legalization of something that had been legal just 15 years before. Major economic consequences, but nothing so radical. But here we're talking about a prohibition which goes back further than any of our lifetimes, which because of a movement driven by activists and by funders not interested in making a penny not interested in making a penny. When people start to say, oh, why did marijuana get legalized in America? It's because the industry and American capitalism. Bullshit. May, right now, in the last year or two, that's beginning to be a variable. But the reason we legalized medical marijuana in California in 1996, the reason we went to Washington and, and Oregon and Alaska and Colorado and Nevada and Maine in 1990, 2000, legalized medical marijuana, that had nothing to do with building an industry. The reason we made New Mexico the first state in 2007 to set up not just medical, legalized medical marijuana, but to set up legal dispensaries, nothing to to do with making money. This is all about eliminating, getting rid of a prohibition. It was about allowing people who could benefit from the medical benefits of marijuana to be able to obtain and be first in line in obtaining their medicine. When we started organizing around ending these racially discriminatory arrests in New York City and other ones, it wasn't about making money. It was about stopping a policy whereby young men of color who were no more likely to have a little weed in their pocket than young white men, were nonetheless being stopped, arrested, busted, sent to jail at two to 10 times the rate of white kids, no matter where you are in the country. Just not fair. It wasn't about making the money. I devoted much of my life to this stuff. And so far, I'm not looking to make any money from this. Just having won this battle and gone as far as we is was important. I'll tell you something else, too, about the politics of this thing. You know how some of these laws really pass? I mean, look, some of the states with ballot initiatives, we just put them on the initiative, DPA, MPP, others did that stuff. But in the legislative battles, you know how some of this stuff happens? We go to Connecticut to try to move something forward there, and we got opposition from the Black and Latino Caucus. We work with them on reforming the sentencing laws around crack and powder cocaine. We win that battle. Then we go back to the Black and Legislative Caucus and they say, OK, we opposed you on marijuana before. Now we're with you. You know what happened in California in 2016? The major Latino population, Hispanic population, not all that sympathetic to marijuana legalization. What did we do? For two years, we walked, worked with them to pass crimmigration bills, the intersection of criminal justice and immigration. We won their trust on that issue. And then we came back and said, are you going to be with us now on marijuana legalization? And they were. In New Jersey, we worked on legalizing clean needles and needle exchange to reduce the spread of HIV AIDS and on moving sentencing reform and other things like that. And then we went back and we said, are you with us now in HIV and drug treatment AIDS? And they came with us. It was understanding that marijuana reform, whether it was medical marijuana, whether it was reducing marijuana arrests, whether it was marijuana decrim, or whether it was adult use legalization, was woven into a broader framework of personal freedom and social justice. 
Now, what that means, I think, is that even as all of you are here trying to make a dime, make a dollar, hopefully make a million, do not forget how this movement began. Do not forget that you are beginning to profit and to exist in an industry which before it became legal and even now resulted in the incarceration of tens or arrests of tens of millions of our fellow citizens and hundreds of millions around the world which empowers what police agencies to divert. I mean, which did all sorts of terrible things. What does that mean? It means, first of all, do it right. The marijuana industry, <laughs> you, you got to aspire. You have to aspire to become a model industry in this country and around the world. You have to aspire that in the days in the future when Harvard and all the other business schools are doing their case studies of emerging industries, they want to point to the marijuana, the cannabis industry, as a model of a new and ethical industry, doing it with the right values, whether it's about helping to empower those people who got most screwed over by the drug war in the past, or whether it's by operating according to standards that are held. To, look, we have a great product. I mean, not only is it wonderful to get high, I love but it's also the fact that the medical benefits are just so extraordinary. But the temptations to push a good product to the point where it becomes a bad product are omnipresent and always there. We never want to see cannabis getting tied in with tobacco in the same product. We don't want to see other things happening that are going to make you feel ashamed of being associated with marijuana. It means that as people worry about kids and about whether kids are waking and baking and all this sort of thing, it means being committed to advancing honest drug. One thing I'm very proud of with Drug Policy Alliance, the organization I built and left it last year, is just last month embraced Drug Policy Alliance's Safety First Project. You want to be involved. You don't want to be ashamed. You want to be advancing what it means to keep kids safe. You want to be part of the dialogue. Where when people are talking about drugs and kids, you're saying, yeah, we're worried. We're worried about that synthetic weed out there. We're worried about opioids. We're worried about the stimulant crisis. We're worried about kids crushing their Adderall and the Ritalin and spreading it around. We're worried about booze. We're worried about tobacco. And we're worried about weed, about kids who are smoking, waking, and baking, getting in trouble, screwing up in their most vulnerable points. We're worried about that. And we have good approaches. It means that to the extent that any of you can make a commitment, and I hope it's all of you, to give back. You know, the wonderful religious tradition of tithing goes back to the Bible. One-tenth of your, of your fields, one-tenth of your earning, you give back. I'm going to say, to the extent you can make one-tenth, and it shouldn't just be your profits, it should be your revenue, but let's just say one-tenth <laughs> a piece to make that commitment. And to, I would say, uh, my loyalty, Drug Policy Alliance, Drug Policy at Art, just go back tonight and send five bucks. Or support the politicians who make a difference. But don't forget the origins of this thing. Understand that, so if marijuana gets legal, but there's still hundreds of thousands of people getting busted for simple possession of meth or cocaine or heroin, while other countries in Europe are not putting anybody in jail for those substances, and they're treating addiction entirely as a health issue, then justice is not done. And the thing that you are profiting from is not really worth it unless you're part of that cause to make this world a better place. So listen. I'm a New Yorker. I was born on the Upper West Side. I've lived back in the Upper West Side the last 25 years. It's pained me that my own state has been so slow. You know, Andrew Cuomo was a good ally on reform, reforming the Drafonian Rockefeller drug laws. He was good on some of the harm reduction, needle exchange overdose stuff. He's been such a laggard on the marijuana stuff. I mean, just, you know, you look at it. Medical marijuana, he took a good bill we put through the legislature and turned it into a bad law. Right? Then we had to hammer him for two years to try to fix up the medical marijuana stuff. Finally agreed to do that. Now he's hanging back. What did he say yesterday? Well, I guess if New Jersey and already Massachusetts are doing it, well, we don't have no, but he's got to have a study because he, he can't figure out how it's going to make him work for him. But we just got to put the pressure on. But to make yourselves part of not just I'm in this to legalize marijuana so I can make money, but I'm in this to legalize marijuana so I can help people for whom it's a medicine. I'm in this because I can't stand the fact that people are still getting busted. I'm in this because I think not, I don't just care about marijuana. I care about ending the entire war on drugs in this country and around the world. If that's what's driving you, then that's what's going to happen. So thank you very much. Good luck. God bless.